hello guys welcome back to my channel this is let to sew with noni today i bring you another exciting tutorial on how to cut a pitiful pant and this is the fabric i'll be working with this beautiful ankara print so this is going to be a short we call it deca okay so it's going to be a short all right so i've backed up my light and from the waist to the hip i have eight inches from the waist to the crotch, I have 10 inches. Then from the waist to the lens, I have 22 inches plus 2 inches for hemming. Now, you please learn to work with your own accurate measurements. On my channel already, I have a video on how to draft a femoral pant, and that would help. So on the center front, I have 3 inches. Okay, so I marked 3 inches before starting my so before we would start my measurements all right so like i was saying if you don't have to take measurements for a pants or a long trouser a full trouser please check my video on how to make a female trouser i have a video on taking the measurements and applying them on your pattern paper okay or on your fabric all right so this is going to be a short with a pinafore and a it's going to have a band and it's going to have um, two straps at the back. So to know the fabric, the amount of fabric or the pattern paper I'll be working with, I'll be f marking my tie circumference divided by 2 plus 2 inches. Now if you're wondering why I have 3 inches from the center front, that is because I want to use this one pattern paper to cut both the front and the back of my pant pattern. All right, so I've marked 16 inches on the sides of my pattern paper and I'll connect that into a straight line to give me a block for my pants. Okay, so it's just, just, just going to give me the perfect pants block. All right, so that being in position, I'll mark 2 inches from the hem line, that's from the knee at the knee line, okay, or the length of my trouser. I'll mark 2 inches in there. All right, so on the waistline i'm going to come in by one inch sorry my camera did not show that but i'm coming in by one inch and you can do one and a half or two inches depending on how curvy you are so i'll use the the hip curve to connect that into to the hip then also use the curve ruler to connect to the hem of my trouser and that's to, the, to where i have my the length of my trouser then i connect that okay so if you want to have this curve you can you can also connect it on a slant line okay so the human body is actually curvy the female body is curvy so you could use the curved part all right if you want so that has given me the shape for my pants so the next thing to do is to mark the tie circumference so the tie i'm working with is 29 divided by 2 gives me 14 and a half plus one inch seam allowance okay so that is what i have marked there on the hip line i'm going to mark quarter of my hip that's my hip divided by four okay the tie will divide by two but the hip will divide by four so i've marked that my hip is 44 divided by four is 11 plus one and a half inches on the cross i measured one inch so on the waistline i measure quarter of my waist plus one and a half inches same allowance i'm just going to highlight all of those um allowance marks okay just to make it um clear so for clarity purposes i'm actually i'm marking on my pattern paper i don't want to do this directly on the fabric so that you get to see what i am making okay so i'm trying to highlight all those lines with a different pen but all my markers have dried out like I was shocked. Everything in there. So maybe the hamatan dried out my ink. Like I'm crying. The whole pack is gone. Alright. So I'll just um, use the same um, color of pen I'm using. Okay. So on the knee line, I'm going to measure my knee circumference divided by two plus one and a half inches so wherever you want um the where you want the shot to stop that is the circumference you would take around the hem okay note that if you want to stop at the knee take the circumference around the knee 
wanted to start stop wherever i just take that circumference so i've connected the main uh, measurements then the seam allowance all right so i've taken care of that so the next thing is to take my curve ruler to connect from the waist to the crotch okay so i'll just make that connection then for the seam allowance i'll also connect that all right so i just want to make sure i actually have my measurements accurately so that because once i'm once i'm done creating the pattern that is it so whatever alterations you make should be on the pattern not on your fabric all right so that is it for my front pattern is as easy as that so this is the front of my pants my short pants all right so remember i said from the beginning that i want to use this pattern paper to create the front and the back all right so all of this is the front so i want to draft the back now all right so on the crouch line we are the front ended i'm going to come in by two inches you could do one and a half you could do two and a half you could do three inches depending on how big your butt is now for this pants i want to have the zipper at the back all right so because i'll be having the initial half inch that i would use, i would have used to join my back pieces together I'll add an extra half inch there just so that i'll have one inch on the hole for my zip then i'll connect it to the extended two inches mark on the couch okay so that's the front then this is the back all right and that would serve at uh, the upper part to serve as my z space on the hemline i'm marking one inch then i'll connect it to the two inches we connected on the couch line okay so that is the back is as easy as that so like now we are done with our back so the next thing is to add the that all right so remember i came in by one inch on the waistline from the block okay so that one inch there would serve as my that allowance i'm only adding that to the back and that is everything you need to do for your pants block okay so i'm going to start cutting now all right i'm going to start cutting and i'll cut the back first now all these my lines i'll send it to the top remember at the top i have half inch allowance there and that half inch is what i'm going to use to join my trouser my my short to the band okay so i would cut the the pattern now all right okay so if you follow my videos when i'm cutting the hem i like to fold it in first before i cut the hem okay it gives me a bit of allowance when i'm folding the hem all right so remember we are cutting the back first okay so i'm just cutting the back through to that one inch that we left for the dart all right so i also cut through this other part the crotch part to the top that's the waistline all right so you can see this is the back all right so when i open my allowance you can see that's the main line but then it has given me an extra allowance around the hem so that when i'm folding i don't have an yeah i would i wouldn't have a shortage all right so i'm going to transfer the back block into my my fabric i'm going to transfer the pattern to the fabric all right so i'll just um, open up my fabric fold it into two now remember when we were working on the pattern okay we did not fold it into two because it was just a pattern it was our working pattern but on your fabric you fold into two because you need to have two pieces for the front and two pieces for the back all right so you fold that into two then place your back block on it this is the back block guys this is the back block all right so i'm placing the back block on it all right so you're seeing me make sure that everything is properly aligned then i'm going to place a heavy weight on it just to hold the fabric down so it doesn't move around when i'm cutting to hold the paper the pattern all right down on the fabric so it doesn't move around and give me maybe an excess or a shortage because i need to get exactly what i have on my pattern to my fabric okay so i'm also cutting through to the sides then to the crotch area i want to make sure you have exactly the same thing on your pattern we are basically transferring your pattern to your fabric we're not adding any allowances to your fabric we've added all the allowances all right 
so that is the back of my short okay now for the dart you fold it into two okay into two equal halves okay around the waist area then you notch so that when you're sewing you just come down by five inches and just sew your dart and that is it for the back all right so i now want to cut the front now so i'll just take out the extra that i added for the back okay all those allowances i added for the back so remember that's the zip area okay so because we've done the back block so we'll just cut through all of this and even take out the dart because I only want my dart to be at the back and that is because of the bomb. Alright, so I also fold in my allowance. So you are wondering why I said because of the bomb, okay? So that the back dart will give fitting to the bomb so to pronounce more, okay? We are females, so you get so you just need to make sure that the back part is popping right. Alright, so I'll just take out that dart. I don't need the dart in front. Alright, so I'll open up my pattern and this is my front pattern. So, so that is it. I'll just cut, um, sorry, place on my fabric and cut. Now, before I also cut, I need to make sure I have exactly this, um, what I need to, because I have all my measurements intact. So, I'll take out my, my front pattern, fold my fabric and place it on it. Alright, so because I am working with um, African print fabric, I would interface my fabric with este, then also line my fabric. I'm going to be doing uh, the sewing aspect of camera just so that this video doesn't get longer than it is already. Alright, so for these annoying stickers on the fabric, I use kerosene to take them off. You can just drop um, kerosene on it, then use my hand to rub in the kerosene round on the sticker. Alright, just rub it in then i'll just i'll just peel it out okay initially i used i i used to use <laughs> my hot iron to take it out but i realized that even after taking out the sticker the the glue still remains there and when it gathers that it makes your fabric really very very ugly so i just use kerosene to just take it out and it takes out both the sticker and the gum all right so on this part of my fabric i have really beautiful flower patterns so i want to have that at the front of my uh pants okay so because of those lovely prints i'll be folding this excess okay i'll just fold that upper part just to incorporate the prints the beautiful flower prints on my front okay so i'll just place the front pattern on it okay making sure everything is properly aligned then place my heavyweight fabrics on them so just help me hold down the pattern then i'll trace exactly what i have on my pattern i am stressing and stretching the world exactly because we have added all the allowances we need on our pattern all right so i'm already placing my fabric again because it's shifted so i need to make sure that i have everything in order before i continue cutting so i cut through the hem down to this other side all right so i still want to make sure that everything is properly aligned guys you don't want to you know take any chances and have your trousers not fitted your pants your shorts oh, i keep saying trousers all right so i have my front pattern now it's so like i was saying i want to line these shorts because the anchor fabric is really very light so i apply sd or paper stay whatever whichever one you have all right so you can see i have those beautiful flower on my front pattern all right so for the lining i'll cut exactly what i have on the fabric the front and the back exactly what i have there and place it on the fabrics and attach the lining to the fabric then i would go and overlock the edges so this is the front and the back of my pants pattern and it's super easy like it was the easiest thing to do all right so right now i want to take care of the upper part of the pinafore like the part that makes it the pinafore all right so remember um the waist measurement i'm working with is 41 
divided by two gives me twenty and a half. I'm dividing by two because we are we are having the pinafore only at the front. Okay, the back would have the strap, so this is just going to be a square shape. All right, with the short the pants block on it. Okay, and I'm going to have a band. So because of that, I'm dividing into two and not four. Okay, so now. Because it's just going to start, uh, it's not going to start directly from the sides. I'm going to take away 2.5 inches on both sides. So 2.5 inches on both sides gives me 5 inches. So I'll subtract 5 inches from half of my waist measurement. And that gives me 15 and a half. So my side is just going to be 15 and a half. Okay. <clears throat> I'll explain that again. Sorry guys. Because I don't want um, the pinafore to get to the sides, I'll just take away two and a half inches on both sides. That gives me five inches when I add them together. Then I subtract that from half of my waist measurement. Now remember that the pinafore is not also going to start from the neckline, okay? It isn't going to start from the actual neckline. So what I'll do is just to fold my fabric into two, then mark my half length. My half length is 18 inches plus half inch seam allowance and that is 18 and a half so i'll connect that into a straight line okay and that into a straight line now like i said the half length is just the top is not going to start from the neckline directly so i'll come down by five inches just like we do for our off shoulder just like we do for our off shoulder and that'll be minus five i just have minus five there so from there we have the length all right so for the sides i'll just uh, mark 15 and a half divided by two because i'm folding my pattern that gives you 7.75 around that area so i'll just mark that then connect into a straight line okay so you could um decide to add half inch um seam allowance to the sides because I'm going to actually cut two of these, then use them to turn each other out, so that the in and out of the fabric, you could use lining if you have um, less fabric, okay? Or you could also decide not to add your seam allowance, whatever, whichever way, by the time you turn, you still have what is enough for the pinafore, alright, so... This is it when I open it up, you place it on your body and you, decide, you determine whether you still want the half inch. Okay, it is you that it's wearing, so you know. So I decide to take away the half inch. So I will just trim that half inch out. Alright. So this is what I have as the upper part of the pinafore, and I'll place it on my fabric and cut two of it then use it to turn out each other all right so here i have um, a long strap of fabric that i'll be using for my waistband and it is five inches long okay it's five inches long so <clears throat> i actually cut two straps of fabric and i'll be using them to turn out each other so i'll place them together right sides facing right sides then join them along the sides just stitch it round, maybe leave an opening of about two inches to use to turn it out. Okay, then I'll, I'll use it as my band. I'll attach the upper parts, I'll attach one side to the, the trouser and the other side for the pinafore. Then this is my two straps. Now my pinafore is going to have straps at the back. So my strap is also is around four and a half inches. So by the time I fold into two, I will just use half inch to sew it all round then turn it out so for the strap the belt or straps as it's been called i've written that out so what do you do because the half length is 18 inches and we subtracted five inches remember from the top so i'm going to add that five inches back so my half length is 18 plus the five inches gives me 23 then i add extra four inches because it's going to actually overlap and that gives you 27 so by the time I um, take out my folding allowance and everything, okay, so it would match up. So on this um, long strap of fabric, I have 27, and I got that from adding 5 inches to my half length, 
plus an extra four inches so that by the time i take in the half having to use to turn it out then it's your your strap has to overlap on the front okay so that is it for the strap all right so um for my front part this is the back for the front of my of my pants i want it to have um side pockets okay now okay now for the back you just join them together and sew on half inch the same thing for the front you join the two sides together this is sewing tricks or sewing tips now okay you just join together and also sew your half inch but for the back we're not going to sew it up to the top because we'll be adding a zipper to it okay now so also to my back i want to my front okay i want to have side pack pockets so from the side i'll come in by two inches then come down by seven and a half okay then connect it on a curve line okay just connect it on a curve okay so on the fabric i came down by seven and a half okay so i'll do the same thing to the other part of the fabric so i want to do that on my uh, departed paper so that you can actually see it clearly in case you didn't see clearly on the fabric all right so I'll come down by seven inches, okay. Then coming by two inches. Now here I did seven inches because I'm coming down directly from the um, allowance we left. We have left half inch on the top, okay. So but my fabric because I'm not seeing the allowance, I just came down by seven and a half. So that is my pocket, and I'll just cut that out. All right. So let's go back to the fabric now. So here. I want to make sure it's seven and a half okay so i would cut it out or you just use my pattern my pattern maker to just you know make sure i have a smooth curve around that part then i'll cut it out okay so i will do the same thing to the other side okay come down by seven and a half come in by two inches then use the curve ruler to connect it and that's how to create your side pocket for your trouser okay i'll also trim that out all right so <clears throat> i'm going to get my strap my fabric for the the pocket okay so i have this fabric now i'll just fold it into two okay i fold it into two the length um, is 10 inches so you just want to make sure that is not the length of your pocket is no longer than your crotch so my crotch is 10 inches so i'm leaving it exactly at 10 inches so the width could be nine could be ten whatever you want okay so between nine and ten that would be the width of the pocket the length is 10 inches remember whatever it is that you have as your crotch that is what you use as the length of your pocket because for a female pants you don't want the the uh, pocket to be longer than your than your crotch okay all right so i've cut that out so this is what i'll be using for my pocket now i'll also cut I'm, i'll be cutting two of that because i actually need two pockets remember for the left and the right hand side so i place exactly the the already cut out pockets and also trim it on the other side of the fabric so now i have two pockets all right so i'll teach us how to you know apply this pocket to your um your shorts right so i'll take my um my fabric the main fabric place it on the side on the open side of the pocket and trace exactly what i have there okay so you want to make sure you pick only one side one part you can see i separated it they take it to the edge then trace it out then cut it out okay you cut exactly that shape so you place on your fabric join it together then to then turn it to the back and that makes your pocket okay so the same thing i would be doing to this side open it up okay then place the front pockets on it 
on the fabric, then trim it out. Okay, so when I turn it, when I use it on it, or the other part is the same. All right, so I'll take that out. That's my pocket. All right, so I've gone to sew my um my shirt. Like I said, I was going to do that off camera, and I have done that. So I've attached the band, the lining. I've lined the um the shirt. I've attached my pocket. You can see the two pockets. I've folded in the hem. I've overlocked the edges. I've attached my strap. I've attached my zip. Okay, so I'll turn it. On the outside and show you okay so this is the, the short if you just follow the sewing tips I give all right so you can see I have my um, three inches for the band okay so then for my straps I attach my strap immediately after my zip okay immediately after the zip no allowance just after the zip that's why you attach your strap okay so that's the, I'll just go give it a good press and it's set. Okay, so now this is the pinafore or the or the, or the upper part. Okay, so I've gone to use this the fabrics to turn the, each other. I've turned it all out. Okay, so and I need to get the part that it's uh, along the length. Okay, then I fold it into two. So I'm just pressing on it with my hands just to have a crease line. So I also take use my chalk to mark the center of my front, okay? Where I have the line I use in joining the two pieces together. So I'll just place the upper part directly on it, okay, on the center point. You remember I folded my um the upper part into two. I, I had to fold it to get a crease line. So I'll just I'm making that again just for you to see. So that gave me the middle of the the upper part. Then I'll place it directly on the middle of my fabric for the, for my trouser. Then I'm placing it inside because I don't want the stitching. I don't want the the pinafore to be on top. So I just want to place it inside so it looks professional. It looks better. I'm using my pin to hold it in place and all for all and. At all the points I am pinning, you just go and sew it there. Okay, so I've just pinned it round. So you can see the pinner for now. So I'll just go and stitch on it, make it top stitch. Okay, so it looks better than having it on the top. It's supposed to be inside. Alright, so this is my strap. Okay, so remember, I'll, it's, I'll just cross it at the back. Just give it a cross shape. The bring it to the sides okay so you attach your buttons i'm just pinning that part you attach your buttons to that side okay so you can attach like three buttons okay so you can see the back i see the cross shape okay so like i said you can attach like three buttons so that wherever fits more you can have it loose you can have it tight all right so if you found this video helpful please like share subscribe to my channel and i love